I live three miles up the Ahaz River. My neighbor across the road is Dyke Dame, who owns the Oreo cookie cows. You know those? My neighbor to the east raises bears. <laughs> well, for those of you who don't know, there's a woman who feeds bears, or fed bears, up the river. Um, Dyke came up to me in 1989, and he was very agitated, because some guys in orange vests were surveying on his property. And when he went down to ask them what they were doing, they told him that they were surveying for a point of diversion on the river that the city of Yahats was going to use for a pumping station to take more water out of the river for municipal use. And Dyke was agitated first off because they were on his property and hadn't asked, so he thought that was rather rude. And, and also, both of us knew that, that the river got rather low. That we wondered, how much water can you take out of the river? Um, and, and will it be okay? So we both went to the city, and we asked the superintendent of public works what this is all about. And he said, don't worry. <laughs> it's only a 2CFS right that we're asking for. We don't need it now. We probably will never need it. And, and it's, it's not going to be much. A CFS is 633,000 gallons a day. Yeah, it's, uh, what is that? That's uh, 450 gallons a minute. The, so I stopped worrying about it. Dyke didn't. Dyke started inquiring, and he, and he contacted the Water Resources Department, and he contacted um, uh, Oregon Trout and people who knew about these things, and he, and he essentially assembled a file because he wanted to know what was going to happen when the city took this water out. I was completely sold out. I, you know, I didn't care. Um, so I just minded my own business and, and kept on going until 1992 when the city actually got their permit and Dyke came up with the file and said, we have to do something about this because they actually are going to be taking water out of the river. And I started looking at his file and one of the first things I noticed, they, there, was, there was a record of all of the measurements of the amount of water in the river from 1925 on. And there were only like 12 of them. And I noticed that none of them were in September or October when the, when the river was the lowest. I thought, well, that's odd. And so I, I called Water Resources and asked them, well, so how much water is in the river? You know, I mean, if you're going to be giving two CFS to the city of Yahats, um, how much is going to be left? And they said, oh, enough. I said, well, looking at the water rights that you've issued, it seems to me like you've got more water being taken out of the river than there is river. They said, no. <laughs> they did say that the river was over-appropriated, but they didn't say that, you know, that it could be dried up. So, of course, I mean, that got my curiosity. I mean, it, it occurred to me, as it occurred to Dyke, that these people might not know what they're doing, and that, and that they were just issuing permits without really knowing whether or not there was going to be enough water to satisfy them. So I started checking around to find out if anybody else had read the river. And I found the Water Resources Research Institute at, uh, at OSU had done a, a projection study of river levels on the coast. For some reason, I don't, and I can never find out what it was. But I found out under, this, under Yahats that it was projected to have a low flow of eight CFS. You're gonna take a quarter of that. Uh, it seemed like an awful lot. I mean, considering we had seen the river fairly low, and if they were going to take a quarter of it, I mean, you're going to see a lot of rock. So from about 92 to 94 or something, I, I started asking around to people. I really didn't know. I mean, can you really harm a river by taking out 
obviously can harm by taking out all the water, but you know, how low can it get? And I asked, I found a man by the name of Mark Campbell, who was a PhD water biologist uh, um, who had been doing a study down at 10 Mile. And, and I asked him, what happens to rivers if you get them too low? And his response was, you can do it on a fairly regular basis for short periods of time. But if you do it on a regular basis over a long period of time, you can really wreck the river. It will never recover. Never recover. And he referred me to a man who at the time was a fisheries biologist at, um, at the Forest Service. And, and I went and asked him, you know, so what do you know? And he said something that really kind of determined my life for the next 15 years. He said that rivers can get to a point, if you take too much water out of them, they begin to consume themselves. And that knocked me over. I, I couldn't live with that phrase. Uh, I, I, I was imagining, well, what happened if we are screwing up here? And, and we are taking too much water out of this river, and we actually end up destroying it. Somebody should probably take a look at this. Well, I went back to Water Resources and said, you know, is there the possibility that we're taking too much water out of this river? You know, and they said, no, absolutely not. And even if there were, Yahats has a right now. It is a property right. The way that, that Oregon water system works, it's a rather arcane system, is that first off, you may own the land under a river system. And like up the river, the, the adjoining property owners will own to the middle of the, of the river. They own the property underneath it. All of the water in the river is owned by the state. All of the surface water in the state is owned by the state. And you have to apply for a water right in order to use it. Once you have that right, it's yours. It goes with the land. It is inviolate. If you keep to the kind of the, to the original uh, uh, restrictions that are put on your permit, you may use it as as you wish. It's it's a great thing to have, but it's a real problem if it was issued wrongly, which I think the city of Yahats was. Uh, it was, I mean, the application is set for emergency purposes only. What's that mean? No fire? No, it means when they ran out of water. No. And, and actually, at that time, the city of Yahats was running out of water. I don't know if some of you may remember that uh, there were restrictions put on water use in the mid 90s. That, uh, you know, you had to, what? You couldn't water outside. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't wash your car. You couldn't, I mean, there were all kinds of, you know, you were limited to X number of gallons a month. And, and Yahats was getting ready to perfect their right to, to put their pumping system onto the river in order to get more water. Well, starting, first off, Dyke and I were, were really curious as to, well, why, I mean, like just like three years ago, they said, oh, no, don't worry about it. You know, we got lots of water. You know, everything's just fine. And all of a sudden, they're, they're putting water controls on everybody and saying, you can't take the water out because we don't have enough. The, the, the two water systems that the, that the city used before, there's one Reedy Creek, which is about three miles up the river, and then there's Salmon Creek, which runs through the water treatment plant. Most of you know that. And, and Reedy Creek, as far as we could see, was flowing like crazy. I mean, you know, you'd see it running under the road, and it was, you know, a nice, healthy-looking system, and your house didn't have any water. Well, the line from Reedy Creek to the water treatment plant was losing half of its water in the ground. That was a problem. When it came to the plant and got treated and sent out to the people who were using it in town, they were losing another 65% of that. 